Hello, welcome to Citizens Forum. It is Wednesday, November the 6th. Um, I'd like to start by thanking the volunteer crew and the Shaw staff that makes this program happen every couple of weeks. My first guest is John Farquharson, and we're going to be talking about the, uh, the election that just happened a couple of weeks ago. New government, or the same old government. <laughs> and John, you're, can I say that you're a supporter of the Liberal Party? You just, can indeed. Okay. Full disclosure. Okay. Knocked on a lot of doors. So, uh, how did you feel about the outcome? I, to tell you the truth, I don't really care. I mean, it's the same old, same old. I, my problem is I don't think we even have a democracy, so okay. who gets elected doesn't really matter to me. If the Conservatives have been elected, I might have been a little more concerned, but I'm concerned with the Liberals having been elected. Yeah, so I just, sh I just sort of scrunch it down to what did happen, and for me it was like we avoided the worst case scenario, right? We avoided Andrew Scheer, I think he would have been a disaster. Ended up with a majority Liberal government. Minority. I'm sorry, sorry a minority Liberal government, which um, in theory for me should be a bit of a disappointment since I knocked on hundreds of doors for the Liberal Party. But actually at the end of the day I'm pleased with the outcome in terms of I think that the Prime Minister needed a bit of a smack on the side of the head uh, and hopefully there'll be some critical reflection on the campaign, on uh, policies that'll now take place that wouldn't have taken place without a minority. And uh, in terms of holding the balance of power, I'd much prefer to have Jag, uh, Jagmeet Singh uh, than Elizabeth May. Now, I, you know, I talk to people and, and people focus on Justin Trudeau and they say, we, you know, we have to, Justin has to do this or Justin has to do that. But the way I see it, Justin is not a decision maker. Justin is a former high school teacher who was brought in by the people who really run the party, which is the corporate community. They brought him in because he, they thought he would be electable, and he was. And the real power has nothing to do with, he, he does what he's told. That's how I see, and that's why I'm so concerned about our country. Because I think the people we elect are just the puppets, and above them is the corporate community who runs all the major parties, uh, liberals, conservatives, and NDP, <coughs> through what are called public relations firms, like, for example, Hill and Knowlton, yeah. which is a company that most people have never heard of, but is very prominent in our society. <coughs> and to me, that's a huge problem that never gets discussed and, uh, and is kind of hidden away, but it's the real issue. Yeah. Possibly one of the reasons it doesn't get that much uh, discussion is because that's not true, what you just said. It, uh, that actually what does take place is that uh, uh, a party chooses the various leaders and they come in and the decisions are made by uh, whoever's holding power and uh, their cabinet and that's what happens. Do I think that there's no influence by uh, you know, uh, well-funded corporations? No, there is some, but I don't think it's to the effect that, you know, obviously you do. You think they run the show, I don't. Yeah. I think that we still have a, a good grip on the reins of what happens. And, uh, you know, I certainly don't see people like, you know, like Krista Freeland, I hardly see as a puppet. I think throughout her career, she's proved herself not, not to be a puppet. And, you know, she's banned from Russia. So, I mean, there are, there are people of that stature uh, in the, uh, you know, in, in the cabinet that uh, I don't think you can dismiss them as puppets at all. Um, I'll just give one example. Uh, polls show that I think about 80% of Canadians would like, with genetically modified foods, would at least like them to be labeled. And that's been steady over many, many years. So 80% of Canadians want this, but it's never discussed. It doesn't happen. So if 80% of us want something important like that, and there's probably many other things we want, and we can't get that, then, you know, I really question the validity of the democracy that we think we live in. Yeah, no, I, I would prefer that my, that foods be labeled clearly, that they're genetically modified. Well, the next but, time you're talking to Justin. But back to the election. Okay. The, uh, in terms of the process, so that was the outcome. That's how I felt about the outcome. But in terms of the process, what I noticed door knocking, I've, you know, knocked on doors for the last four or five elections. And uh, people are, you. 
pe people are generally kind of in a pretty good mood in the sense that they're participating in a large community event right across the country and they feel part of something. And even if they don't agree with you, if they're, you know, going to vote for other parties, they're willing to uh, engage you a bit on the doorstep, right? But this time there was this kind of like, I found this, there was this distemper. People were a little, they were extremely disappointed in the process. They were extremely disappointed in the, the way that the whole uh, uh, election campaign took place. It was just, uh, you know, was there substantive debate on the issues that face Canada? Uh, not yeah, really. I didn't see any. I, yeah. you know, if you saw some, I, I certainly didn't see much of it. You know, the dis you know, the one English debate that I watched was a total, total gong show. Um, and then in the, you know, being questioned uh, by the media wherever, it was just, you know, one kind of. Uh, negative accusation about the other guys uh, and then they would hurl negative accusations about them and they would go back and forth and back and forth and it was like a it was like a food fight in kindergarten I mean that's that's overstating it but it was not it was not Canada's finest electoral process ever in terms of the in terms of the uh, it's a sort of substantive nature, if you will. I mean, and yet, if you look at our problems, I think they are all eminently solvable. Mm -hmm. um, maybe climate change, it's already too late. Maybe, you know, we, we're going to have a disaster that's unavoidable. But at least we could be moving in correct directions. Instead, you know, we're told that now Alberta is ready to separate. But the way I see that is the oil companies and the media are promoting Western separation in order to confuse the issue because the real issue is you know we're all going to be dead the people of Alberta included and certainly their children if we cannot fix this up but that issue isn't being discussed at all instead we're told that the issue is Western alienation and I see big money coming in from big oil to promote that which is a disaster how do we allow that to happen in our country and the same with homelessness Homelessness is solvable, but only if we get to the real issue, which is that we have a shortage of housing in our country, and the federal and provincial governments have got to deal with it, and they can. But it's, was that ever mentioned during the election no, process? No, that's the kind of substantive issue that I had in mind in terms of, you know, uh, the housing crisis across Canada should have been uh, one of the top issues being discussed in a very informed, critical kind of way, but it wasn't. And as you say, you know, you look at all of our problems and they're solvable, but in, ter but in order to solve them we have to discuss them. And one of the best places to discuss them, I think, is during, uh, during an election campaign. Yeah. Um, How about the I'll leaders? Sorry, go ahead. Okay, I'll just mention that in, because we use a first-past-the-post system and not a proportional system, the outcome was that it took about 38,000 liberal voters, because the liberals got the most seats, so they always, it means they needed the fewest votes to get those seats. It took about 38,000 liberal voters to elect one member of parliament, but it took 350,000 green voters to elect one member of parliament. Just, just to point out that I, as a green voter, am worth about one-eighth the value of a liberal voter. and. That's not good for democracy either. Why should the bigger parties benefit um, from the voting system? And seats are taken from people who vote for the smaller parties. Yeah, that's, you know, that's one take on the problem. My take is that my big issue uh, is the fact that uh, members of parliament get to sit as members with less than 50% uh, of the vote of the support of the constituents in their, in their riding. riding. And for me, that's the biggest problem. You can't have people in there with 30% of the vote, 35% of the vote. You need to have 50% plus one, or else you don't get to sit as a member. And that also is very solvable. I don't know why we don't do it. It's preferential ballot. Yeah. Yeah. Very easy to do. I, I don't know why these things never happen. So you wanted to talk a little bit about um, high points, low points, any, anything that comes to mind? Well, as I said, the whole thing to me was a bit of a, of, of a, low, a low point, point in terms yeah. of the level of discourse. Um, the, um, the, I, I, 
I, there wasn't really any sort of high point for me in terms of, I think, like a lot of people in, in the uh, across Canada, whew, the high point came at the end. We're sure glad this one's over. Let's never have a campaign like this again. Let's never, you know, uh, show the degree of disrespect that I think was shown to Canadians by politicians in their exchange with the media, because that's who we, you know, get our information from. You know, the, the discourse has to be elevated, or else uh, it's just uh, people are going. We we're lucky to get 66 percent out. I was surprised we had 66 percent out. 66 percent of the population voted. That's a good turnout. Yeah. So um, here we are. We have a liberal minority government. Do you think they're going to last? Do you think what? What do you think is going to happen? Predictions like for the future. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't see there's no any reason for them not to last. You know, three four years. Um, there's enough commonality, I think, between uh, between the Liberals and the NDP, uh, and uh, to get. Uh, progress on a lot of the uh, issues that need to be addressed, and I think that yeah. So I'm I'm hopeful that it'll remain stable for the next three or four years. Now, um, I think the NDP opposes the TMX pipeline. Is that the case? Well, maybe. With, maybe. Yeah. You know, with with uh, my understanding of, of Mr. Singh is that everything's on the table. So uh, I know that he personally is opposed to it, but then you've got Rachel. Not I mean I know it's provincial, but you've got a lot of NDPers in uh, in Alberta who are in favor of it. Um, so it's going to be an interest. It's going to be an interesting challenge for for Jagmeet Singh. But at the end of the day, uh, you know I'm not sure why TMX would come up as a as a vote of confidence in Parliament. I think the ship has sailed. It's under construction. There's some issues before the courts, but there's nothing left for it to come up as a, as a, uh, as I say, as a motion of or as a vote of uh, privilege. Not privilege. What's the word? Yeah. A vote uh, of confidence. Oh, sorry. Vote of confidence. Okay. A vote of confidence. Uh, so. I see big problems coming uh, in the economy um, because just because everything is so based on debt. And uh, the stock markets are at near record highs, even though everything seems to be coming apart. The environment, um, I just, I don't know what's going to I mean, we're looking almost at food shortages now. People are beginning to talk about that. It hasn't really gotten into the media, but if you look a little deeper, people are starting to talk about food shortages. You've got a huge social and homelessness issue. Is there, I mean, if none of these things are getting solved, then is the country just circling the drain? Well, and that's a... Are there any, what, what's, what are the Liberals going to do? Well, two-thirds of the people who voted voted for, for, for progressive parties who are, who are, you know, basically going to address the issues that you just mentioned. I would have been much more pessimistic if it had been the reverse. Uh, in terms of two-thirds having voted mm -hmm. for uh, the Conservatives. Which is an interesting point because they did get more votes. The Conservatives did get more votes than the Liberals, which, which is an interesting point. Well, I know, but when you, when, you get, when you get every vote in every riding in Alberta and every vote in every yeah. riding in Saskatchewan, it You're sure, bumps, votes, it sure yeah. bumps up the, uh, the overall uh, vote. We have a minute left. Any, any last? Uh, Elizabeth May, about her, her uh, stepping down as leader. Good thing, bad thing? Should have happened sooner? Should have happened later? Um, I've been a big fan of Elizabeth May for many years. I think she's done the right thing by stepping down, and we'll see where it goes. Yeah. For me, I, it's, I, I think it's unfortunate for the Green Party that they didn't, she didn't step down, uh, you know. Prior to this election. Prior to this yeah. election. John, thank you very much. Thank you, Jack. And thank you for watching this segment of Citizens Forum.